Okay, hi guys. Uh, this is my first post to YouTube. Um, I'm a fairly recent convert to this incredible sport of RC Heli. Um, probably been in it since January, which is my birthday when I got a machine, uh, which was the the Blade 453D. Um, I also have a couple of other smalls. I've got the MCPX here, which uh, is the Fly Barless, and I, I started actually on the MSRX. Which was a great little, great little heli to sort of start learning the ropes on. Uh, can't overstate it enough. Get a simulator. I got Phoenix. Um, I probably saved myself a ton of money by learning to fly there. But at the end of the day, there is no substitute for getting out there. Just make sure it's not windy when you're learning, because that could be really difficult. Um, you'll notice that I have two helis in front of you here: the 350, uh, sorry, the 453D and the Terex 250. Both are now fly barless converted with uh, Spectrum AR7200 Beast X units on them. Uh, first thing about that, never ever look back. Fantastic. Uh, you know, the um, stability of these helis now is just incredible, especially in wind uh, without the fly bar. Uh, so, you know, first of all, couldn't recommend that enough. Secondly, can't recommend the Beast X unit enough. Just terrific. Uh, instructions are dead simple, some great tables, good use of colour, very clearly written um, and it's step by step and you know following instructions you can't go wrong. A couple of things though that I want to point out which are really important that you need to take into consideration and for most people this should be pretty obvious but I'll say it anyway, get the mechanical setup of your heli right first, especially the swash. Okay, get the swash set up. Get yourself a swash plate leveling tool that's the right size for your heli and get that sucker absolutely dialed in before you even start the beast stacks. It's critical. Uh, and get your uh, blades lined up at zero degree pitch as well. Uh, that's really important when the swash is level. Um, use a, a digital pitch gauge, which is what I've got because you know the readout is really accurate. You can do it with an ordinary one, but frank, frankly, the digital is just, I mean, I bought one of those recently, and uh, that's the, one of the best things I've ever bought, to be honest, so, so get one of those. Um, setting up was easier on the big heli. In fact, I went through the steps right the way through and, you know, just nailed it first time out, which was just brilliant. Um, I had more difficulty on the T-Rex despite n not nailing it on the, the mechanical setup. Uh, suspicion is that you know the whole thing is so much more smaller scale that the tolerances are less, so the scope for you to get it right is is minimised. Um, so you know after going through you know step to up to step J, which is the difficult one, which is where you have to get this six degrees pitch and and the the blue light on the bottom of the beast X. There's a if you look at the bottom of the unit, it's not switched on, but effectively what 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 you get here is a um, a light that appears when when you when you reach six degrees of pitch, um, which is supposed to be the optimal setup. I think the key word here is optimal. The manual does talk about getting the blue light. Bear in mind the blue light is optimal. Now on the 453D, I nailed it straight away. Six degrees, blue light on. Next step, job done. Took the heli out, flew it, and it was just out. You know, perfect. First flight, no problem. The T Rex two fifty was difficult. Um, couldn't get the blue light. You know, I just did everything on the linkages and the between the, uh, the you know the blades and the swash and the swash and the servos. You know, I kept taking those suckers off. Broke a couple of them. You know, you felt they were getting looser and looser. And I thought, no, you know what? I just I can't keep doing this. So I rang up Horizon, uh, which I've rung before. And to be honest, they're brilliant. You know, you get through to somebody quickly. Uh, they uh, you know they always want to, they're happy to talk to you and explain. And you know the guy said, and I've heard this on a YouTube video somewhere else. Don't worry about the the, the blue light. Okay, blue light and six degree optimal, but make sure you get either a pink or a red. So it goes pink, red, blue. I guess improving the optimal nature of the setup. Um, you know, I got pink, couldn't get the red, but I did get the six degrees, of course. And uh, you know, his advice was, that's fine. Don't panic too much about the light color. Just get a light. So I did. Uh, I, I completed the setup, took it outside, and you know, as with the 450, spooled it up, and the thing just took off vertical, dead straight, dead stable. So you know, the manual talks about the blue light. Don't panic too much if you can't get the blue light. Get the 60 degrees, and at least get a pink light, and you're good to go. I have talked to people who've got the um, the blue light on the Trex 250, 
Um, you know, to be honest, I spent about two hours trying to get that. Uh, and, you know, to be honest, it was driving me nuts and I don't know how the Blazer they did it. Um, it could be they've got a different sort of head setup. I've got the Align 3G set. Oh, incidentally, on the, the blade, I've got the um, the kit, the, the Horizon Hobby um, fly, fly Wireless Conversion kit for the 450. Um, so, so there you go. So, infamous Step J, not as infamous as you think. Don't panic about the blue light, as I said. Get the pink or the red, and you will be good to go. The key is the six degrees. And as I said at the beginning, mechanical setup before you even touch the bee snakes. Get that dialed in. You shouldn't have any problems. Good luck. Appreciate any comments. My first posting. I'll post others as we go through and I as I develop with this hobby. Um, have fun flying, guys. Bye.